Her explanation for why she is going to suddenly retire. She has just taken the podium. Let's watch together. Uh, for me personally, this was a decision I wrestled with, but it was time. I will always be a police officer. It's who I am. But ultimately, as I learned from a former boss, when you know it's time to go, you know it's time to go. After serving this department and this community for almost three decades, I can honestly say I have no regrets. There are things I would change, yes, but being a Seattle police officer and having the opportunity to be the police chief, it was a dream of a lifetime. I want to thank Mayor Durkin, sincerely thank her for her support. I will continue to do all I can over the next three weeks uh, to set this department up for a smooth transition. I love this department, I love this city, and I will always love being a Seattle Police Department officer. To the men and the women of the Seattle Police Department, sworn and civilian, you will always have my respect. You will always be in my heart. You are, without a doubt, the best police department in the country. What is important is you have remained committed to being the best, to continuously improving and innovating. I know that times are hard right now. I also know that when people get to meet you and to know you, they see what amazing people you truly are. The vast majority of the people in the city support you. You are essential to our community safety, and I thank you for all that you do. Thank you for showing up every day, committed to public safety, day in and day out. You spent time away from your families and loved ones to serve our community. Even during this COVID-19 pandemic, your commitment to our community and our profession has been absolutely unmatched. I am grateful and humbled to have had the opportunity to serve as your chief. I know this department and this city is well, uh, will have a well-deserved and well-respected SPD command team. We have one of the most diverse, well-educated, and experienced command teams in the country. Many of, him, of them are here right now. I thank you all for stepping up and being willing to serve our organization. Some may think the quality of leadership and the leadership team doesn't matter, but I know better. I know this team will keep the department moving forward as it re-envisions public and community safety. And I'm grateful to Deputy Chief Adrian Diaz agreeing to serve as the interim chief of police. I know he will continue the department's commitment to engaging the community. He knows this department and he knows the city. I have seen firsthand his tireless commitment to the Seattle Police Department and the people, especially the young people of our city. He is more than ready for this challenge. And to the community, thank you. You helped me get to where I am. I think so many of you have just been wonderful and I, and I appreciate you just like family. And I will continue to. I have an ask of our community. I am one part of the department. If you support me, you support this department. I know out of this challenge will spring new hope for a better future for all. I trust that everyone, residents, business owners, and elected officials will find a way to work together to put aside personal conflicts, political grandstanding, and power plays. Seattle has the best and the brightest. If we work together to overcome our challenges, if we listen to one another, not just those we agree with, by the way, uh, if we value experience equally to passion, I know we can create solutions that will carry Seattle through this decade and into the future, leading the way for the entire country. And now I'm going to scare Amy because I'm going off script. And just, <laughs> and just say, <laughs> and just say, first I want to thank my family who supported me all the way, all the time. To the pastors who are here, thank you. Uh, you have been wonderful. Uh, your support has been amazing. Uh, Pastor Ransford, if you don't remember him, he's the one that said, Chief Best is the best. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> I, was, I was cracking up. That was very, that was very funny. Yeah, yeah. Reverend Walden, I really cannot even find words to thank you for your continued support. You have been just wonderful. 
I, I feel like um, words are not going to be able to express the depth. If you cry, I'm going to cry, so I can't even look at you. <laughs> and the depth of my appreciation. Your heart is gold, and I just thank you so very much. I also want to thank Trisha, who is my executive assistant, who has helped me through everything. She knows more about me than my husband. <laughs> she knows it all. The credit cards, the bank accounts, she knows where everything's hit. She has been amazing and wonderful. And to all of the other department heads who are here, you people have been absolutely the best. I've talked to each and every one of you on different occasions. They sent me emails and letters and been so supportive. Um, I didn't even expect to see you here today, and I can't tell you how overwhelmed and how grateful I am that you showed up for little old me. Um, it's very, very much appreciated. Um, and I just want to thank everybody. This has been really the job of a lifetime. Abtamu, I forgot about you there, one of our community members uh, who came in and who's helped me immensely to learn the culture of our East African communities, um, how to better connect because it was so important, and just so many of you. I could go on for hours and hours, but I just want to say that I am I'm sad to leave in some ways, but you know, when it's time, it's time. I look forward to handing that torch over to Adrian Diaz. But for now, uh, Mayor Durkin. <clears throat> Note to file, never follow the chief. <laughs> um, you know, <clears throat> We're facing unprecedented challenges, a global pandemic that's getting worse with no end in sight, an economic crisis that has devastated workers and small businesses and put a spotlight on the deep, deep inequities in our economy, and a civil rights reckoning that has made our nation, our state, and our city confront, acknowledge, and begin to truly address the generational harms caused by systemic racism. It's been a hard, hard year, and today's a hard day. But it is the difficult times that we see the true metal of a person. Their courage, their grit, their compassion, their megawatt smile. <laughs> Carmen Best has been one of those leaders who has shown up and shown what she is made of. I have no doubt that Carmen Best will continue to lead, continue to fight for what is right, continue to be a voice for equity and changing policing and other systems that have perpetuated inequities and racism. It's unfortunate she will not do it here as our chief of police. This past weekend, as she said, she told me that she wanted, it was time to resign. We've had many conversations over the last three weeks. My heart is obviously heavy to lose her, and I will freely admit, I wish she was staying. I asked whether she would, but anyone, anyone that knows Carmen Best knows, she does not act or speak without thoughtfulness. She thinks through consequences. She owns and stands by her choices and her decisions. And I respect her decisions, including the one she's made today. It is one of the reasons that I think Seattle and myself will miss her so much. Her candor, her integrity, and her grit. I think it is an understatement to say, Chief Seattle is gonna miss you. Thank you. Thank you for the long hours and personal sacrifices you have made for decades to make our, our city better and safer. For the acts of kindness and your ties to the community. Thank you for your humor in tough times, your steadfastness and your willingness to give me and the city your very best. Your very best efforts, your very best advice, and your very best optimism compassion and deep belief in our common humanity. There was not a single conversation I've ever had with Carmen Best where she couldn't see through the dark to how things would be better. T 
to every police officer in the Seattle Police Department and to every person who's thinking that they might want to be a police officer in Seattle. Chief Best is the model for what we need. It's what we want in our community. It's what she has fought for in our community. She loves the city she served. She loves the department and her officers. She has fought to keep her officers safe and healthy and get them the resources they need to do their jobs. At the same time, nobody cares more about this community than Carmen Best. She not only put her life on the line as an officer to protect and serve, she has been a role model for so many women, especially young black women and girls. And she does it all with such grace, with such a great sense of humor, and such a great, deep humility. Losing her is a deep loss for our city. And it is even more profound given where we are at this moment in history. She has taken on an enormously challenging job in the best of times. And she has done it in the most challenging times. We've grown as a large city with bigger public safety issues. She led our city through episodes of gun violence, including a mass shooting. She has been unwavering, unwavering in her commitment to reduce the use of force under the consent decree and to better serve the black community and communities of color. She believes deeply in making Seattle a leader for the best policies in the country, not because there's a consent decree, but because it's the right thing to do. And she created a great leadership team of diverse individuals with great experience, officers of color, LGBTQ and women, commanders who've worked in every part of the city. And for the last two years, she has recruited the most diverse officers we've had in the history of the Seattle Police Department. She hires and promotes because people are good. She respects them and gives them the authority they need and the resources they need to do the job, and she holds them accountable to that very high bar. She understands deeply the new challenges facing officers, like so many more people in crisis on our Seattle streets, people who need social services, people who need housing, meal assistance, childcare, or a counselor. Make no mistake about it, Carmen Best was the right person to help reimagine policing in this city. In recent weeks, she and I outlined our visions for the future of the department, but they were based on her experience, her experience as a police officer and her life experience. Chief Bess, her leadership, and many of her officers were engaged, truly engaged, in deep conversation with community to make better choices for the department and for the city to think about how they could do their jobs better and serve the city better, and what resources we needed besides police. Chief Best, I think, invented the phrase continuous improvement. <laughs> she already had the shared vision for more community policing. Under her leadership, she created the Collaborative Policing Bureau, brought back community service officers, added mental health workers to our precincts, focused on strategies to reduce 911 calls that needed a response instead of an armed police officer. And she did this all before George Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis because she knew already the need to make sure that policing was based on community needs. She knew it because it was her life experience. She believes in the Seattle Police Department. She has tried to make it better at every step of the way from the moment she was an officer to every day as chief. No officer and no duty they have to perform to her was ever a line item in a budget. She knows the men and women who serve the department as people, and she thinks of them as family. She also knows and understands the many communities in our city. She has visited them at their churches, in their homes, and at too many community events probably to count. <laughs> she understands the work of every unit and every patrol shift at the Seattle Police Department in every precinct. She knows the challenges they face, what they need to do their jobs, and how they can best serve the people 
in an appropriate constitutional and community-based way. The people of Seattle have been her family too. And that's why today hurts for so many of us. When most of the city was asleep, Carmen Best would be up at 3 a.m. roll calls or calling me at 3 a.m. with updates. <laughs> the late nights, the Miss Family and school events are probably too many to count. Though rumor has it, she was a vociferous fan when her daughters played basketball. <laughs> and having been to her with Storm Games, I know it is true. Chief Best, also make no mistake about it, set a very high bar for every police officer in the rank and file. She expected from them what she expected and did for herself. Courage, integrity, and honorable service. To the residents and businesses, young people and city council, I hope we can find a better path. A better path forward than the absolute breakdown of collaboration and civil dialogue we have seen in recent weeks. Of all the major cities in America, Seattle had the chief that not only understands the lived experience of black America because it is her experience, but has the deep experience in policing needed to change it. We had the chief that not only believes in the importance of reimagining policing, she was the person and probably still will be the person that helped leads the way for our nation. We have the chief that understands every inch of this department and how you can actually get to generational systemic change. Even in the midst of disagreement, I hope we can find common ground. I will admit, it's why it has been so mystifying to watch the city council plow ahead without ever consulting her, talking to her, or listening to her pleas to be thoughtful. Not to set artificial targets, but instead to have a plan, a plan that focuses on duties, mission, and outcomes. And that's why it was both infuriating and deeply disappointing that the day after the chief stood in this room and criticized the council's approach, offered her own approach and vision, the very next day they voted to slash her salary and the salaries of her whole team. This is probably the worst budget climate our city has ever faced. But in rebalancing the budget, the city council did not cut any other department director's salary. They did not cut any other department leadership team's salary. They did not cut their own salaries or the salaries of anyone working for the city council. They targeted only Carmen Best. They targeted the team she has assembled and they did it despite the fact that they know it's not enforceable, it's not legal, and spoiler alert, the charter requires me to honor the contracts and agreements that Chief Best made, and I plan to do so. But it's not about the money. That was a final straw. It's about respect. It's about listening to someone who is there with some answers and with the lived experience to help Seattle move forward. So my message to the City Council is, I have always been, and I remain willing to work with you. I proposed a joint effort to engage Seattle, all of Seattle. Engage them in deep conversation about the future of policing, how we in Seattle can better lead and lead the nation in not just admitting, but actually changing the deeply racist systems. This conversation must be centered on the voices of the deeply impacted communities. These conversations are hard, but the work is even harder. There is not a quick fix. There is no one-size-fits-all solutions. This is just hard, painful work based on a willingness to see and to trust in our common humanity. The cause is urgent. The pain is deep and the need for ferocity is real. But the road is long and the efforts must be sustained. We must reach back and acknowledge the generations of pain and suffering and injustice. 
But we must look forward to a place where that is replaced with healing, true equity, and love and respect. Council, if you want to go far, we have to go together. The work we are doing is far too important. And I know this work will continue. Chief, you have left behind a great team. And one of the greatest is Adrian Diaz. It's why I'm going to be appointing him as the interim chief beginning in September. He served nearly two decades in the department. Deputy Chief Adrian Diaz has led the innovative Collaborative Policing Bureau, and he will work with community members to protect them and to reimagine policing. And anyone who has seen Adrian in any community events knows how deep his roots go. They all know him, and he knows them, their children, and their families. I am certain that he will continue this hard work to really honor and center black lives, to make sure that this department continues and continuously improves. He's spent a career elevating the voices of young people, and I'm grateful that he is willing to meet this challenge in these challenging times. Make no mistake about it, he is not Chief Best, he is his own person. But he is committed to the same vision, the same values, and he will also make sure that our rank and file is held to the highest bar, but they have the resources and backing they need to do their jobs. And for that, I again want to thank Chief Best, and I want to ask Chief Diaz to take the stand. I'm going to have to get my glasses out. I know I have big font, but for some reason I still am uh, learning that uh, I can't see very well anymore. So, <laughs> uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to Mayor Durkin for the opportunity to lead the Seattle Police Department. I've been blessed to be surrounded by and learn from some of the best criminal justice leaders in the country. But it has been the highest privilege and honor to serve under Chief Carmen Best. She's been a great mentor, friend, and chief. Her leadership is truly the best, as you would say. <laughs> we are a better department and city because of her service to the community and her time as a chief. We and I will certainly miss you. Your love for this department, your connection and caring for the community, your boundless support as a friend, you've truly put your entire self into this job and you've definitely earned some time off, so thank you. Our department has had rough times during my career, but I believe this is the most challenging time in our history. Re-envisioning public safety, defunding the police, and a discussion of role, uh, the role race plays in all of our governmental systems, these are at the forefront of our current challenges. This country has wrestled with the original sin of slavery and racism since its inception. Every aspect of our society, including the criminal justice system, carries with it the disparities rooted in that racism. The Seattle Police Department is committed to transforming public safety into a model that is equitable and just for all. This will not be done in a vacuum. My commitment to you today is to include our collective voices in the weeks and months to come. Over the course of my 23-year career, the Seattle Police Department has always evolved. This is because of our amazing officers who are devoted to making a difference. Knowing all the tragedy and unpredictability inherent in the profession of policing, the officers still sign up. They continue to put themselves in harm's way and always run towards danger. Our officers have pledged to be a part of the community and they're committed to reform. They are second to none. Over the last several years under the consent decree, the Seattle Police Department has continued to serve as a model of the highest standards in our profession. We have an extensive system of accountability, including in-car video and body-worn cameras. We have the nation's most robust civilian oversight system, which includes the Office of Police Accountability, the Officer Inspector General, and the Community Policing Commission. We also have the monitoring team, the Department of Justice, and the Honorable Judge James Ropart. Our department will continue to enhance our transparency and accountability efforts. We have clearly demonstrated the reform mindset is baked into how we do our work. Always improving and innovating in areas of de-escalation, 
crisis intervention, and community engagement. Despite these advances, we know much more is demanded of us. This work will continue and it will not stop. I know that we need to rebuild the trust with many of you. We are listening to you, we hear you, we will continue to evolve and improve. We will move forward designing a public safety model that has the right resources to respond to crime and to allow us to nurture the relationships that are necessary to support a safe and healthy community. We will continue to rise and exceed the expectations of the people we serve. We must be united as we address our big city issues. The Seattle Police Department is committed to the three core ideals that are on our patch, service, pride, and dedication. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it over to the mayor. Good job. I think now it's question and answer. That is correct. Thank you, thank you Mayor. Thank you, Chief Best, and thank you, Chief Diaz. Um, as everyone knows, we are going to do follow-up questions today, so I will read your name, you will ask your question, and then please do let us know if you have a follow-up. Our first question will come from Dee Dee Sun, Cairo 7, followed by Chris Daniels, King 5. Dee Dee, the floor is yours. Uh, my question for you is, uh, if council asked for your help now, or even after your... Nope, lost you, Dee Dee. Sorry, Dee Dee. Could you please start over? Yeah. We had a, a bit of a disconnect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Chief Best, if council asked for your help now, or even after your last day, uh, would, would you continue to work with them and uh, give them advice? And what kind of advice would you give now that you've announced your retirement? And I do have a follow-up yeah, Didi, uh, continue would not be the right question because we never started the dialogue. So I would say um, now I'm turning it over to Chief Diaz. It's his role, but I love this city. I love the department so much. Anything that would help uh, make things better, of course, I would do whatever I could uh, on that end. And my follow-up, Chief, thank you, um, is I think everybody is wondering, was there something specific? Was there something that... Uh, the hair, the, what is it, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, I suppose. Was there something in particular that really sealed it in for you that con contributed towards your decision of, uh, of retiring? You know, that's a great question. I was um, really reflecting on the decision. Uh, there's a lot of things. It's a combination of things. I think it's been intimated that somehow it had something to do with the salary. But nobody joins the police department to get rich. I'm just going to say that right now. So I would have chosen a different profession if money was a motivator. Um, but the thing for me ultimately um, was that, and I've said it multiple times, I really think that we needed to have a plan moving forward. It was highly disappointing to not see that. I'm going to read uh, an email that I got just last night, the, the only email that brought tears to my eyes. Um, but it was really something. So this officer uh, sends me this email. Thank you for what you've done for me personally and for this department. I've finally been hired after applying for five years, and I was ecstatic that it was under your command. Being an African-American African male with you as my chief made the fact that I had served my country under the Honorable Barack Obama that much sweeter. And I remember meeting him. His name is Marcus Jones. He was uh, doing temperature checks in the building, and we shook hands and we talked. A great young man, tall, stout, wonderful African-American man. And he is one of the people that will probably not keep a job here. And that, for me, I'm done. Can't do it. So that's your answer. Uh, thank you, Chief. Our next question will come from Chris Daniels, King 5, followed by David Croman, Crosscut. Chris, the floor is yours. Chief, um, I just want to follow up on your last answer. Uh, would your decision be different today if the council did not approve an amendment to cut your pay by 40 percent or if protesters had not arrived at your house in Snohomish County? Would your decision be any different today? Chris, I think I just answered that, <laughs> but I'm happy to say it again and repeat. This is not about the money, and it certainly isn't about, you know, the demonstrators. I mean, be real. I have a lot thicker skin than that. It really is about...
the overarching lack of respect for the officers, the men and women who work so hard day in and day out. And honestly, um, the idea of letting, after we work so incredibly hard to make sure that our department was diverse, that reflects the community that we serve, to just turn that all on a dime and hack it off without having a plan in place to move forward, it's, it's highly distressful for me. And I really, you know, it goes against my principles and my conviction, and I, and I really couldn't do it. I mean, I honestly, I was very reflective about it, but that, I mean, I care about other people, and that was really hard for me. I'll miss you too, Chris. <laughs> Chris, would you like a follow-up? Yeah, I actually, uh, my follow-up would be along those lines for the mayor um, regarding, uh, uh, and I realize that the Chief Diaz is standing to your left, uh, but there is talk about uh, a national search, searching for replacement. How do you go about that? How do you sell Seattle right now when you, when you have a massive budget gap and you have uh, an agreement that there are going to be cuts from the Seattle Police Department and you have federal oversight? I mean, how do you sell this job to anybody? right now. So those are two different questions. Uh, I think Chief Best said it best, <laughs> that this job, the job she had was a job of a dream and a lifetime and leading this department, one of the best departments in the nation, is for any police chief uh, a great accomplishment. That being said, I have no plans to begin a search this year. I think we have to make it through the budget season. We have to see what the council is willing to do for this department in the long run, because right now nobody would know what job they are applying for. As we reimagine policing, we have to be honest that there has to be a role for police. We need that for community safety. We need the other things too, and I have been saying it and the chief have been saying it. We believe in that vision where we can have different kinds of responses to help people, and we've been working on that for two years, like through the creation of Health One. But at this moment of time, it would be not wise to start a process to look for a chief because number one, the challenges are great. But again, what job would they be applying for? Um, I'm hoping the council will come and join with us and we can collaborate on what that looks like together, centered on the voices of community and the deep engagement in community. But that will be up to council their part. My part as mayor and with Chief Diaz, we're going to do that. Thank you, Chief, or thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Our next question will come from David Croman, Crosscut, followed by Dan Beekman, Seattle Times. David, the floor is yours. Yeah, Chief Best, um, you know, uh, clearly you have some um, concerns about uh, the direction the city is taking the police department. Why, why leave? Why not stick around and sort of continue to fight for what, for what you want the department to look like? Yeah, David, um, I, I think that's a very thoughtful question, you know, I, and I'm trying to express that um, as eloquently as I can. But at some point, every leader has to recognize when you've hit the point where you're maybe not able to move the needle forward for the men and women of the organization. I really don't want the animus that has been directed toward me to affect the people who work for me. Targeting my command staff and their pay you know, it, it just felt very vindictive and very punitive. And I don't want them to be affected by that type of, that type of animus. So I had to make some decisions. Again, this was, this was, I was very thoughtful about it. I've had a great career. I don't want this to be like a wake. I mean, it's been, <laughs> it's been 28 years of wonderful things. You know, great relationships, wonderful community members, a great organization, a, a wonderful command staff. So I don't want to over-reflect on the council. This is so important that we move forward. And it just, it's just time to put fresh eyes on it and a fresh perspective. So I'm very comfortable with that. David, would you like a follow-up? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it sort of sounds like um, you believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you believe this is in part personal, that this has something to do with you personally. Yeah, I, I think I'm on the record for saying that multiple times. You know, the journalists ask that, they ask the same question over and over. I've said it multiple times. I, do, I definitely think it's personal. But with that said, I'm stepping out of the way and doing what a real leader would do and focusing on the, what's going to help the organization and the city move forward. That's where I'm at. Thank you, Chief. 
Our next question will come from Dan Beekman, Seattle Times, followed by Brandy Cruz, Q13. Dan, the floor is yours. Thanks so much. A question for the chief uh, and maybe a follow up if possible. I just wanted to uh, make sure when you said you just felt like you couldn't do it, it sounded like you were referring to uh, laying off officers, especially newer officers and newer recruits. Is that what you meant when you said, I just felt like I couldn't do it? That is exactly what I meant. You know, um, my heart has been in this for a long time. And some of our recruiters are even here right now. We worked so hard. We had a big campaign. You know, the council gave us $1.6 million to make sure that we hired the best and the brightest and the most diverse and brought them on. And less than a year later, we're going to just turn them all away. It feels very duplicitous. And I, honestly, I just, I have my convictions. I cannot do that. Dan, follow up. Yeah, I, you know, maybe you sort of hinted at this with uh, your answer to David about saying you don't want this to feel like a wake, but it, it does seem like maybe, uh, and maybe I'm misinterpreting, but a little bit of a weight has been lifted off you as you're talking here today. It's been a hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of a weight. That's a way. That's one way of putting it. <laughs> I was thinking about what will what will I miss, and like everybody says, I'll miss the people. Uh, what won't I miss? I don't think I'm going to miss putting on this heavy wool uniform ever again. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, in some ways, yes. Um, but you know, I feel like I've done what I could do. Uh, I've, I'm leaving a great organization in a good spot. Uh, the mayor's going to continue to support us. Chief Diaz is going to do amazing work. Uh, the command team is great. The other department heads, they're wonderful. The community support is outstanding. So really, you know, it's, we're in a good spot overall. I absolutely believe that. Thank you, Chief. Our next question will come from Brandy Cruz, Q13, followed by Paul Kiefer, the CS for Crank. Brandy, the floor is yours. Hi, Chief. My first question is for you, and I will have a follow-up for Interim Chief Diaz. Okay. Uh, since it, I sound like you're on a very honest, uh, blunt kick today. <laughs> I, I want to ask you, Chief, what do you believe truly in their hearts is driving the decisions these council members are making? You know, Brandy, I really can't answer that, to be honest with you. The best people to answer, you know, what the council is up to is the council. I mean, I, I would not be as arrogant or presumptuous as to put words in their mouth. I just really don't know. Uh, interim Chief Diaz, for you, we just heard from Chief Best that she felt like you know, her convictions, she couldn't bear to see the department uh, let go of some of these young officers and to have to be a part of that. From my understanding, that will now fall on you. And these cuts that the council has suggested, and that's really what they are, are suggestions in terms of the specific cuts to things like SPOT or harbor patrol. So you're going to have to make these decisions, unless I'm wrong. Uh, the chief says she couldn't do it, or convictions wouldn't allow her to do it. So how are you going to go about doing it? I've got to move the department forward. Um, these are going to be rough times, and I think laying off anybody with the, they've got family, kids, it's going to be a hard time. But we've got to move this forward. We've got to reimagine public safety. We've got to, you know, provide, you know, community safety and a healthy, a safe and healthy community. So, you know, right now, that's what my commitment is. Uh, we will have to make very tough decisions. We have uh, the right command staff that is uh, available to, to really sit down and figure out what it's thoughtful and, and how we can move this forward. Um, and we also have to remember that to the, for the city council that while they can propose certain uh, positions being cut uh, out of certain units, ultimately it does fall on the chief of police. And so, you know, those are the things that we're going to have to evaluate uh, moving forward. Thank you, Chief. Our next question comes from Paul Kiefer, CS for Crank, followed by Matt Markovich, Como TV. Paul, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, this is for Mayor Durkin, actually. Thank you so much. Mayor, how will the absence of a permanent chief impact the upcoming contract negotiations with SPOG or SPMA? It won't. Oh. At all, okay. Flat OKC. Okay, um, <laughs> right, all right. So then could you elaborate upon your reasoning for not beginning the search for a new chief uh, until somewhere, sometime in later next year or even beyond that? The 
budgeting process or relating to the Seattle Police Department has been uh, not based on collaboration and very unpredictable. If we started a search right now, I doubt we could attract the candidates that Seattle deserves because they don't know what job they're applying for. We got to make it through this budget season. We got to see what the department's going to look like. And then we've got to have a deep engagement with the people of Seattle to really imagine how policing is going to look through the next generations. We can lead the nation in this. When people call 911, we do want them to get the help they need. If they need a social worker or a mental health care worker or something to help them on community wellness, we want them to get that. But if they need a police officer and it's 2 a.m., every part of the city deserves that response. And we're going to make sure that happens. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question will come from Matt Markovich, Como TV, followed by Hannah Scott, Cairo Radio. Matt, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anthony. I know this is a this is a question for the chief. I know we're in such a controversial and difficult time, and you're only two years into the job. And I know you said that time is is time, and which is, sounds very cliche. And people have been asking you about that tipping point decision. But it sounds like, even though it's a you were jovial at some point, it sounds like the the council has defeated you, and that you couldn't do the job anymore. Can you explain? Yeah, that's all a matter of perspective and semantics. You know, everybody's going to categorize it the way they want to. But I stand before you, I'm just an honest broker telling the truth. Uh, you know, I, re I really did self-reflection. I really felt like it was time. I thought I wanted to make sure that the department was in good hands and that we can move forward and start creating the dialogue that needs to occur so that we can have true public safety. We can re-envision how we're doing things. We can make sure that we're able to move forward. And I think we had kind of come to an impasse where that wasn't going to happen. That's not being defeated. I think that's leadership and that's being smart. You know, the definition of, you know, <laughs> of crazy is keep doing the same thing over and over and think you're going to get a different result. I think we need to have fresh, fresh eyes, fresh leadership, uh, and I'm very comfortable with where I am with that. If I don't mind, um, the council did make suggested cuts, and that's what they are. You still had the authority to uh, exercise what cuts you want. Why didn't you just stay on and do the what you would what what you would do with the money that you were given? Well, regardless of how that shakes out, it's going to likely result in some layoffs, and I just wasn't willing to go down that road. I didn't want to have this c continuous back and forth. It was really important to me that we uh, are able to move forward in a way that benefits everybody. You know, I think, you know, it, I have nothing to lose. I'm walking away. So I will tell you that it is so important to me that this organization and that this city has good leadership and that we're not political grandstanding and politics and all of that. You know, I'm done with that. I really want to see the city move forward and do things that are really based on thoughtful dialogue, thoughtful decision making. You know, what is the plan? Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And you can't do that in a vacuum. You just can't. So if I'm an inhibitor to that, I'm more than happy to move away. And I really do mean it. I have had so much so much fun and so many great people that I've met that really I, I'm totally comfortable with where we are. Thank you, Chief. Our next question will come from Hannah Scott, Cairo Radio, followed by Justin Carter, Capitol Hill, Seattle. Hannah, the floor is yours. That's fine for me. There we go. Hi, good morning, Chief Best. This news, as I started sharing it last night of your retirement, I have heard from so many people, from elders in the black community who, who don't feel like their voices have been heard, uh, to the little girls that were mentioned earlier who have looked up for you, looked up to you during this process, and a really large portion of the city. This was a really big kind of collective gut punch. They really believe you were the chief to leave the city and, and to see you go was hard for everyone. What would you say to all of those people? I would say that this city is going to be just fine, that we have good leadership here. We're moving forward. Every, you know, and so I've, I've done what I could do. I've taken it up to where I think I need to. And I absolutely believe I have total confidence in uh, Chief Diaz, in my command team, and in the people who live and work in the city uh, to support him, to support the police department, to make sound decisions under the guidance of our mayor. So I'm walking away uh, in many ways feeling good about 
where we're leaving it and, and really feeling bright about the future and where the city can go. And I have just a quick follow up and I would love to hear from all three as, as Chief Diaz, Chief Best and the mayor at this time. Uh, I'm hearing from some officers within the department this morning that what they've seen transpire over the last 36 hours essentially is a city council that endorses the ACAB uh, chant that we hear so often in the protests. If you know, uh, all cops are yep, bad I know or it. something else. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what would you say to, to those officers? I would say just what I said in the note that I sent to officers, which is we have been through good times and bad, you know, ups and downs, uh, rough spots and easy spots. Um, this is a rough spot, but we've always gotten through it. We've always ended up uh, on the other side in a better place. I can remember when they first told us we were under a consent decree, how terrible we thought it all was. But we worked through it and we've come out with an organization that is just leaps and bounds upon where, from where we started. You know, de-escalation, crisis intervention, force review boards, you know, a robust accountability system. So we'll get through this. Everybody will get through it and it will be fine. We just have to make sure that we're steadfast and have resilience. That's what I would say. There's nothing I can add. <laughs> okay, Mayor. <laughs> I think that's a great question, and I sent a note to the Seattle Police Department officers in rank and file as well. Um, we will get through this and be stronger, but I also want to say to, I think it was Matt's question, anyone who knows Carmen Bass knows she ain't a quitter, and this isn't about quitting. She's stepping out of the way because she thinks that's what's best for the department, and if rank and file officers want to honor her, you stick with it too. You prove her right that we are the best department. We can get through this and we can improve. It has been hard. Um, I've never seen a time in the city of Seattle where we could have events where so many officers get injured and no one on city council calls to ask about them or express any regret. We've got to change that. And we have to also show that what we saw two nights ago when a group of dozens of people came downtown and just started smashing windows with hammers and baseball bats. That's not protest, that's just unlawfulness. And we have to get to a point where we can, when we reimagine policing, we have to be honest, honest with each other about what those differences are. We have to honor what this chief has tried to build and has built over the many decades. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question will come from Justin Carter, Capitol Hill, Seattle, followed by Kate Walters, KUOW. Justin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, question for Chief Best. So, Chief Best, sorry, I'm going to take you back to CHOP, if you don't mind. I I'm curious, as, as you're reflecting on all this, um, and what your thoughts are um, about what happened with, with CHOP and, and the protests on, on the Hill, and, and yeah, especially like the abandonment of the East Precinct, and, and what role, if any, those incidents in that period might have played in your decision? Yeah, thank you. No one has asked me about that before. <laughs> so let me just try to see if I can figure out an answer here. Uh, look, we, the, everyone knows what happened. The Capitol Hill organized protests came into the city. It, where it started and where it ended were two different places. Uh, it was uh, initially a protest um, in the area uh, that did not have uh, what it devolved to, which was the lawlessness and the crimes that began occurring. And after that, you know, we found it to be necessary uh, to move it, uh, to remove the chop. That was why. It wasn't simply because people were protesting. We all respect people's First Amendment right for free speech and to assemble. Um, but when the lawlessness began, then we had to really take action. And it was unprecedented. Uh, I remember talking to some behavioral an uh, analysts, and I was like, okay, what's the roadmap here? How has this ever been done before? And luckily for Seattle, we're the only place in the world who's ever had that confluence of events in the way that it came about. But I think that we worked through it uh, as a team with other, other city agencies to make sure that we didn't injure people, uh, made sure that we were very uh, considerate of people's rights. But also when the lawlessness began, it was time to move. So, and I think the timing of it was exactly what it should have been. Uh, everyone was able to leave relatively peacefully uh, without major problems. So it worked out the way it should have worked out. And sometimes it takes a good patience and negotiation and leadership from all of you and the mayor to make it work out the correct way. Uh, when it comes to the precinct, I've said it multiple times, 
Uh, yeah, I wish somebody would do their homework, but honestly, uh, we, you know, the officers left after we had a, one, a threat of fire to the building, and two, uh, out of concern for sensitive material and weapons that were inside the building to um, take them out of the building. Unfortunately, we weren't able, as a number of folks uh, that ended up um, converging on the streets and putting up barricades to safely get back in. Uh, ultimately, uh, through patience and time, we're back in the building and operations are back to normal. Thank you, Chief. Justin, okay. would you like a follow up? Yes, thanks. Um, so, so it sounds like you're categorizing it then as um, a, a success and, and not something that's um, either a, a failure or, or a frustration or maybe even a reason that this is the, you decided that this job is something you didn't want to do anymore. Is that, is that an accurate? Uh, yeah, absolutely uh, not. Absolutely not have an effect on you know my decision making. Look, nobody got hurt. We're back in the precinct. Things are operational. You know, I'm not looking back. We're looking forward. We're moving along. We, we've already, we've been there. We've done that. It's over. Uh, and we're moving uh, to try to re-envision policing moving forward. Thank you, Chief. Our next question will come from Kate Walters, KUOW, followed by Jean Johnson, Associated Press. Kate, floor is, your, floor is yours. Hi, Chief Best. Can you tell us uh, what is next for you? What are the next steps? Are there other jobs that you're looking at? Or uh, is it just a break for a little bit? I'm going to take some time for some self-reflection. I don't know what I'm going to do if I have free time. This job literally is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, I, I still have a few weeks before I'm officially retired. Um, and then I'm just going to take some time for myself. I think I've earned it. Kate, okay, follow up. <laughs> Yes, please. Um, my follow-up is a question that was actually suggested by a community member, uh, and the question was, what are the challenges of leading the SPD being as a black woman? Well, I think uh, there's no police chief in the country that wouldn't say their job is challenging. Um, and I, I think that there's some unique things I bring to the job that help me and that probably work against me in some cases. But the challenge of policing in America today is great no matter who you are. Uh, we have to figure out a way to make sure that issues like systemic racism, which, by the way, people you know always talk about criminal justice, and we know we have issues. But I'm going to tell you, healthcare, education, all systems need to be reflective about what we're doing and how we're going to move forward because we recruit uh, from the human race. So we got to make sure, as a nation, we're moving forward on these issues. I think I represent uh, opportunity. Uh, is there are very few African-American women in this field and certainly not as chiefs. So in many ways, I represent what the future can hold. So, and I feel very proud of that. And I've held that uh, you know, as, a, as a very much a, a challenge and a responsibility. Thank you, Chief. Um, our next question will come from Jean Johnson, Associated Press, followed by Natalie Graham from The Stranger. Jean, the floor is yours. Hi, Chief Best. Um, you referred to uh, personal animus that you felt that the council has uh, that is motivating some of this. Mm -hmm. uh, can you comment a little bit on what you perceive as the origin of that? Well, yeah, I would say this. Uh, as the mayor pointed out, you know, no other department head has arbitrarily had their salary cut and the salary cut of every single member of their command staff. And while I said I'm not in it for the money, but it did seem punitive, and I was especially offended by the fact that they would even suggest that my command staff take a salary cut. We have the most diverse command staff in the country, black, white, Latino, Asian, male, female, sworn, civilian, PhDs, JDs, everyone. We have an incredible group of people that we've assembled. And to even consider not uh, compensating them fairly was ridiculous. Illegal, by the way, but also ridiculous. And so how else am I supposed to feel? There's a whole room full of department heads in here, and not one of them was named, just me. So yeah, I take it personal. Thank you, Chief. Dean, follow up? Sure, I meant, um, I meant more what do you believe is the, the origins of the animus? I mean, why? Again, uh, you'll have to ask the council. Uh, you know, I can't answer for them. Thank you, Chief. Our next question comes from Natalie Graham, the stranger, followed by Simone Alisea, KNKX. Natalie, the floor is yours. Hi, my question is for the mayor and the chief. Um, do you believe that? 
Um, do you believe that the changes the council made to the rebalance budget were racist? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not using that harsh word. I would just say that I would like, um, obviously I would like to move forward in a way, and I think Chief Diaz is a person to do that, to make sure the policies and the interaction um, are positive for everyone involved. Mayor? So I'd point out a few things. Number one, it was the chief and I who stood in this very room and said that we thought a 50% cut with no plan was not feasible and not wise. And we proposed what we thought could be cut and transferred from the department after thinking about it and being thoughtful and based upon the chief's great experience. The council took a different route. They promised a 50% cut and yesterday they couldn't deliver because they found out what the chief and I cautioned was it wasn't possible, it was unwise, and it needed greater thought. And in fact, the vast majority of what they passed yesterday was exactly what the chief and I proposed. The $3 million they added, it'd be one thing if they just added $3 million cut and said, chief, exercise your charter duties. Do what you know how to do and manage against this. But instead, instead, they wanted to micromanage and play mini police chief. Cut here, cut there, do this, do that. It showed a complete lack of respect and frankly, in a misunderstanding of how the department even operates. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Natalie, follow up. Yeah, um, is that typical in the budget process for the council to have to point out when the chief should do her job and exercise the cuts as she sees fit, or is there something different with this budgeting process? It is different from any budget I've seen with any council trying to get down to the line items of personnel decisions that are clearly vested in the chief of police and the charter of the city of Seattle. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we are on our last three questions, so just thank you all for hanging in there today. Um, our next question is coming from Simone Alisea, KMKX, followed by Deborah Horn, Cairo 7. Uh, <coughs> Simone, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, this is actually for Chief Diaz. Um, I am uh, curious, given that Chief Best struggles um, with the council and in, in communicating with the council, how will you endeavor to um, create and maintain a relationship um, with the Seattle City Council as they go through the budget process this fall? You know, I look forward for them uh, to contact me. I look forward to having these discussions. I look forward to, as we enter the 2021 uh, budget process to, to having fruitful discussions about how it would be best for me to run the department uh, in during this time. What, uh, what proposed ideas that they have uh, so we could figure out how we actually, you know, do some community investments. But give this a discussion where we can actually have conversations about the best approach uh, for the policing uh, environment. Thank you, Chief. Simone, follow up. Um, and this is a follow up for the mayor. Um, you know, you've talked about how the, the, the process that's gone on in the rebalancing for this year has um, been unlike what you've seen. Given that, what's going to be your approach um, in the next few weeks as you as we roll out, you know, the, the next budget proposal? So that's a great question. And we will continue to work and collaborate across government with community and with the council on the entire budget. Remember, the Seattle Police Department is just a, a portion of the overall budget. We got very bad news this week. Our forecast says that we are $25 million worse off this year than we thought. And so making government work and, and provide the services to the people of Seattle is going to be even more challenging for every single department. So we are going to work department by department to see how we can make sure we deliver core services. Don't cut the services that help those people that need them most in this time. We are in unprecedented time in terms of community need. And we have responded as greatly as we could. And we're going to craft a budget that is people-centric. And so the process will be I will continue to work with and reach out to the council, to community, 
On policing itself, we've begun a process by which we want to deeply engage community to, to hear from all of Seattle on what's that next vision so we can actually address both the real issues of systemic racism and brutality that African Americans and other community of colors have felt for generations. But as the chief said, true public safety doesn't come through police. It comes by having good housing and healthcare, education, economic opportunity, all those things that provide true equity and resilience for community. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question will come from Asher Stein, Rainier Avenue Radio. Asher, the floor is yours. Hello, um, I have a question for Chief Diaz, or Interim Chief Diaz. Um, what do you want to stress about the future of officers in the SPD? Uh, you know, right now, we I, I think Chief uh, Bess has actually uh, answered some of this, but uh, right now we're going through a challenging time. Uh, this is not easy uh, to go through where officers are, you know, have had a, a lot of things thrown at them, whether, you know, not having the precinct, uh, having to deal with demonstrations, you know, day in and day out, uh, also responding to calls, shootings, robberies, rapes, you name it. Um, so the, the stress levels are high. Uh, we are going to get through this. We are working through a, a process and a plan to making sure that we are able to provide public safety for all, um, that we want an equitable and just department. Uh, and so right now it's just, you know, honoring a little bit of patience as we get through this trying time and, uh, we will, we will work through this. Thank you, Chief. Asher, follow up. Um... Well then, would you accept um, transitional jobs for officers? Would you accept um, maybe re-educate or retraining for other community service um, work in, in the future, community-centered work in the future? Yeah, you know, right now officers, you know, have uh, been in discussions about, you know, how their role is uh, in working with the community. Uh, we have done a lot of work in youth violence prevention work and, and engaging youth uh, in employment opportunities uh, in a variety of different other things. So, yes, we are open to having what those discussions could, you know, could lead to. Uh, at, ultimately, we might have to make sure that we have enough officers that are responding to 911 calls, that they're, you know, handling, you know, the responses and investigating properly uh, these types of calls from robberies and homicides. And so... Yes, we have to have that balance of making sure that we're able to provide a safe, you know, and uh, a crime free as much as crime free community as we can, but also, you know, dealing with some of the social challenges that we face in our city. Thank you, Chief. And our next and final question will come from Deborah Horn, Cairo Senate. Deborah, the floor is yours. Thanks so much. I wanted to ask the new chief a question. You know, when we've been talking to business people and we were talking to some people in the Pioneer Square area yesterday, and their complaint was that they felt the police weren't doing their jobs at 4th and uh, on 4th, right in front of the city hall yesterday, a group of protesters decided, nope, this is their space. And they even told us that this public space was off limits to us as journalists because they had taken over it. What will you do to reassure the people here that the police are really on the job? I hear this question a lot. Where are the police when they are needed most? You know, that it, it, it's actually a question that we're always trying to make sure that we have enough and adequate staffing in patrol every single day. You know, this is something of, of a challenge where we have, you know, close to about 100 officers on any given watch responding to calls for service. But when demonstrations are taking half that personnel uh, to to be able to handle uh, demonstrations that are that are property damage that is occurring and a variety of different other things, people putting fires set in, into different businesses, uh, setting trailers on fire. That is not uh, that is not easy for the amount of staffing that we have on any given watch. So what we have to make sure is is that we're we we are trying to ensure that we have officers that are responding to calls for service. And so, yes, I mean, that is one of the challenges that we, we face when you have, you know, a group of, of people that are trying to avoid, you know, being filmed, uh, causing destruction, and then trying to make sure that we're balancing, you know, the ability to respond to 911 calls throughout the city, as well as being able to handle the demonstrations. Thank you, Chief. Deborah, follow up. 
follow up and this one is for the mayor. So mayor, um, both you and the departing uh, chief, so she will not have to. Departing the job, to be clear. Departing the job. Yes. I'm Irish, we're used to wakes, but this is not that kind of wake. It's not a wake, absolutely. But nonetheless, you will remain. Chief Best will go on to greener pastures and presumably a time when she can relax more. How will this conversation that you've been having today, uh, talking in such harsh terms about the council, the city council, how will you be able to come together? Have you decided you don't need to be nice anymore, that you have to get out the bat and hit them in the head? What will you be doing to try to bring all of you together to do what you say, and that is to have the entire community work on this very difficult problem? So, Deborah, I think that's a really good question. Um, I am always willing to and will work with anybody and listen to people. Since I've been mayor, I meet with most council members, if not on a weekly basis, on an every other week basis, to talk about what their concerns are, to let them know where we're going. And so I will continue, and as I said in my opening remarks, I am willing to work with them, and I think we need to work together. Seattle needs to see its leadership coming together to actually chart the course together. We have enough dysfunction in the other Washington, and we have the opportunity to be different right here. At the same time, I will do what I think is right for the people of Seattle, for the people of the Seattle Police Department, but for the people of every worker in the city of Seattle. We know this is such incredible, challenging times. There's no mayor of Seattle that has ever faced what we're dealing with right now, a global pandemic that is getting worse, an economic crisis that will get worse, a city budget that gets worse by the tens of millions every quarter, and on top of that, a civil rights reckoning that requires each of us to dig deep in ourselves and government to admit the generational wrongs that we've done. We can only do that together. I want to work with this council. I think all of us have to be willing to look forward and to join together to do that. Thank you, Mayor. And with that, the Q&A portion of today's press conference is concluded. Um, we'd like to turn it back over to you, Mayor, or to Chief Best, if uh, either one of you, or to Chief Diaz, if either one of you has closed Thanks. Thoughts. I'm going to let Chief Best have the final words. But again, I think the number, the main things to take away here are we owe a huge debt of gratitude to Chief Carmen Best, not just for what she's done in the two years of Chief of Police, though I owe her a huge debt of gratitude, but for her almost 30 years of service, where she put aside family, family obligations, all those events, and worked around the clock. And she showed what she could do. She is a role model for every girl out there, every young girl that if you put your mind to it, you stick to your principles, you have integrity and you work hard, you can advance and lead. She's an inspirational leader. You know, you saw it here today, through the most difficult things that we have done together in the last two years, she would always have an optimistic view on how we could move through it. She believes so deeply in the goodness of humanity and the kindness and empathy that we can share, she leads with that herself. But she is also strong, she is determined, and she makes decisions that she stands by. It's a rare combination. We are so lucky to have had it in the city of Seattle. I think we are better because she was here. I wish she were staying, but I am also so grateful that Chief Diaz is stepping up. I've seen him in community. If any of you reporters are out there, go to South Park or Rainier Beach and talk to the kids and the families down there. He knows them all by name. He knows who they are, what they do. Um, and that's the kind of chief that he will be. He reflects the values and principles of Carmen Best, but he's his own man. And I think we are lucky to have him too. And with that, Chief, you get the final words. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks. Well, no prepared remarks. Just to say that I am so honored. Just as I started out, it's been a wonderful, wonderful career. I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, and I won't miss these press conferences. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 
that's the number two thing I won't miss. But boy, I am so appreciative of all of you for being here, for all the support that I've received over the last almost three decades. You know, and I, I know I'm not, uh, you know, uh, rose-colored glasses optimistic. I'm optimistic because I absolutely know that this city, this wonderful city and the people in it, are going to do what's right. They're going to support the police department. We're going to look for re-envisioning and how we can do things better. Uh, I wish I could thank each of you individually uh, for all that you've done to support me in so many different ways. Um, but I just want to end by saying I'm honored, I'm proud, and I thank you all. Thank you so much. So a very emotional uh, hour or so we've been watching together here on King 5 with Police Chief Carmen Best announcing her retirement and at times joyously uh, uh, almost giddy. Seems like she said, I'm ready to move on, but at the same time defiant and insistent. She said this is not about the money. It's about, quote, the overwhelming lack of respect for the other officers. Talking about the city council's suggestion to cut the police department's budget. She said, quote, no other department had their salaries cut. I took that personally. We'll have much more team coverage coming up in minutes. We also have some breaking news. NBC News is reporting that Joe Biden has selected a vice presidential running mate and could reveal his decision today. And further breaking news that the Big Ten has now officially postponed its football season to the spring and the Pac-12 is expected to follow suit as early as today.